Hey everybody, welcome to Matt Men, your source for all things professional wrestling. I'm Andrew Zarin. I'm joined by my tag team partner each and every week here on the show, Rich Dambolian. Hey, 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 my babies. How you doing? You know that's what? how he does it, right? That, that's exactly how he does it. Perfect. N and nobody's going to hear this. No one is hearing this like little side chatter. I'm going to edit this whole thing out. Nobody's going to know that it's not Rich. Uh, Joel Pearl here. Uh, Joel, you've been up to a lot of stuff. Fightful oh, Overbooked. Goodness. Yes, Fightful Overbooked, if I, if, if, if I may plug for a moment. Yeah, man. If you head on over to youtube.com slash Fightful Overbooked. Yeah, you can go see Sean Ross Sapp on the main channel. That's fine. He's great. But if you want complete nonsense wrestling talk, if you want just people joking around about old wrestling, new wrestling, all wrestling of all kinds, we're like the ESPN, the Ocho of Fightful. Go to youtube.com slash Fightful Overbooked. I host a bunch of shows. Uh, if you know Will Washington, he hosts a bunch of shows. Jeremy Lambert, who writes the site, he's got it. And everyone that you can think of that you might like or maybe don't like, who cares? It's wrestling and subjective. You can go over there, Fightful Overbooked. We've got new content dropping literally every day, sometimes more than once a day. Go check it out. Yeah, you guys are doing some great stuff. That I think I have Will on uh, Observe Alive in the next couple of weeks. Wonderful human being. Yeah, that will great. He's great. Uh, he's great at, I, I mean, I, I listen to a whole bunch of stuff that he does, so he's fantastic. And you're fantastic too, Joel. A good friend of ours here at the show. I like that everybody's so intertwined now. We all work together. There's no animosity amongst brains, except us. We have a ton of animosity towards each other. Yeah, I mean, I basically had to blackmail you into getting the spot today. You did. That's how it worked. Yeah. He, had, yeah. he has all my photos stored he saw what happened in vegas he took all these photos and now he just pulls it out and he's like remember this and i'm like okay you're on the show this week you're an incredibly week. easy man to set up <laughs> <laughs> tell me about it uh, a lot happening in pro wrestling man the last couple of weeks this is a a very hot period a lot of changes happening uh, I, I wanted to get your thoughts on this before we go into what happened on dynamite and everything else this whole um Obviously, the, the entire Cody thing. Uh, I'd love to get your thoughts on this and, and what you think is going on here. I mean, from everything I'm hearing and everything that I'm reading, it's, it's happening. He's, he's, he's ready to move on. He's ready to leave the territory, as I know uh, our pal Dave Meltzer said and was told to him. Uh, I'm excited for him to potentially go back to WWE. I know a lot of people are feeling a little on edge about it, and that's fine. But at the end of the day, you got to go where your priorities are. And his priorities may not be running a new wrestling company. It's clearly there's some money involved that he needs or wants. He wants to grow a, his public profile. That's understandable. And you don't necessarily do that in AEW, which is growing and it's wonderful, yeah. but it's not WWE. So for him to go back and potentially A, make more money, which, you know, he's a new father. It's time. Maybe he wants to see that growth for his family and secure that bag for his family. That's great. Uh, and again, the, the priorities change. And I'll never, ever, ever try to understand why a millionaire does what he does. But in this case, it just sounds like he's, uh, he's ready to be a big player on a bigger stage. You know, unlike <laughs> I have the total opposite problem. My day to day job is to figure out how millionaires think. Literally, <laughs> the more power to you. I, I have to speculate daily uh, on why they do things the way that they do for for my day job. So uh, very different. Th listen, I, I agree with you. Everything you said here. Um, I, I listen. You know, people get upset. Uh, some people feel like he turned their back, his back on them. I listen, people. Do it's a career, man, and and sometimes you make crazy moves. Uh, I have gone back to jobs and and work with clients that I swore to myself I never ever would again, and uh, sometimes I'm still miserable doing it, and I realize it was a big mistake. And other times things are a little bit different. So I'm very curious how this how this goes, uh, especially for uh, Cody. Listen, man, I hope I hope he has this tremendous career when he goes back. You know, yes. I hope it's a very different positioning for him and they, they propel him to the top and he's able to do some really cool stuff and it works on TV. I, I mean, you can't hope for the worst for somebody. And I don't understand that. I don't have that thought process. I don't I don't hate watch things and I don't I don't look at people and I'm and I hope for their demise. You know, like I don't I don't think that way. So, listen, he's going back. Uh, I think it's interesting and we'll see whatever happens. It's going to happen within the next couple of weeks for sure. You know, either either building up to mania or the day after mania we'll see it i don't know what what the right way to do it is but uh we're seeing a lot of these changes happen and i want to get your thoughts on the steve austin stuff man 
Hold on, before we get there, can yeah. I give you can I give you my my theory how this Cody thing goes? Yeah, down? yeah, give it to me. Give it to me. Okay. So a lot of people are saying, you know, Raw's going to be at the Vice Star Arena in Jacksonville, March. I think it's like 14th or something like that. That's great. You know what's even closer and better? There's a SmackDown in Miami on March the 4th. March the 4th is a Friday night. March the 6th, down the road in a little town called Orlando, is uh, AEW Revolution. And there's going to be a live rampage on Friday night. And remember SummerSlam? Remember when we met at SummerSlam? Remember what happened the Friday nights going into SummerSlam weekend? Remember how the talk all switched what was when it? a certain punk, yeah, a certain yeah, yeah, punk decided to make his debut in Chicago? Yeah, I think we're going towards that, and it's a turnabout is fair play. And no, by no means am I saying you know the CM Punk story is bigger than the Cody story. I'm not saying that. It's not a question of who's. I mean, that's bigger, a, but it's that's a, question a great of receipt. Turnabout. I mean, that's a yeah, fantastic that's, receipt to give. That's it. Yeah, that's I, exactly. It. I didn't even think of that. I think that's a fantastic theory, dude. Uh, to do it on that day when they have a pay per view going on and make it into something tremendous. I, I, dude, I think you're right. If it happens, I will take victory laps. And then people are going to say, you know, oh, but who's he going to face on SmackDown? Here's the great thing about Cody coming in. He's not assigned a brand. Yeah, he can go he can anywhere. come in. He can go anywhere. And SmackDown is viewed by more people than Raw. That's, mm-hmm. that's the reality of it. That's the way the TV contract works. That's Fox versus USA. He can easily get more eyes and say, I'll be on Raw this Monday night. And then I'll address WrestleMania. But I like now, that, I want to tell you I'm back. Yeah, but you know what, though? That is such thoughtful booking. You know, it's not going to be that way. Like, I just think he's going to come out and and like interrupt the Dolph Ziggler. No, I don't think that's going to happen. I think I think if they when they position him, he's going to be positioned in a bigger picture because it's not the same Cody. It's not Stardust. It's not anything. This is a whole new person going into this company. It's a very different Cody. So uh, we'll see, man. I think that's a fantastic way to do it. I'd love to get people's thoughts on that and what they think. They think that's a good idea. Uh, Let's see. Uh, Steve Austin, I want to get your thoughts on that before we go into the news. So, okay, it's been 19 years since his last match. I understand that. I also understand that the Cody stuff completely took away from the Stone Cold news. I'm fine with watching him in a match. I'm fine with seeing Stone Cold come back. If it's one time, Kevin Owens would be the perfect guy to match up with. He would be safe with Kevin. Kevin loves Stone Cold. They're friends outside the ring. There's a lot of uh, professional respect there and love. I want to see a match like that. On top of that, I think that if and when it happens, that's when it'll pick up again in this new cycle. Because the Cody stuff is a is a now conversation. Well, the Cody stuff took over, like, uh, and and it's understandable though. You know, and we're like two weeks in, and we're still talking about it. And I think this is a big this is a big deal. It is, and with Stone Cold, it's still a big deal. But the problem is, it's it's twofold. One is that Cody is an immediate star. He's an immediate uh, factor in that he's coming as the EVP and founder of the competition, whether WWE admits it or not, doesn't matter. He's still an active wrestler crossing over. Uh, and the other thing is Stone Cold shows up all the time. He's been around. He's just yeah. never been, res- he's never had a full match wrestling active. He comes in, he does the, he does the stunner. And that's it. That's good enough. But for him to have a full match, that's, that's gonna the be bread and yeah. butter. Yeah. Very interesting stuff. Um, Elimination Chamber. Let's go into this. Uh, was this Saturday. We did a watch along here. Uh, I thought it was the easiest watch along I've ever done. The show was under three hours. I messaged somebody at WWE and I said, hey, do me." I said, can I ask you something? And they go, yeah, what's up? I go, are you by Nick Khan by any chance? He goes, no. I said, can you do me a favor? Can you tell him to move all the pay-per-views to noon on a Saturday? Thanks. <laughs> You're going to get your wish soon enough at Mania Weekend. So there you uh, go. Uh, I got to tell you, man, it, it's, it was fantastic to watch it. It was easy now, outside of the show, right? Uh, there, were, there were some hits. There were some misses with the show. There was a couple of cool things that happened. Uh, Roman Reigns defeated Bill Goldberg to retain the Universal Championship. Uh, This is Bill's last match on his deal. I don't think this will be his last match in WWE. I think when they do his last match, it'll be a big send-off. They've done a great job at erasing all the wrong with Bill Goldberg's first run in this company. Uh, I thought it was fine. It wasn't, you know, Bill looked okay, right? I don't think he looked terrible. 
Yeah, it was fine. The match was what it was. It was Roman Reigns smashing another legend. And he showed. And the match was, yeah, it was. Listen, the smartest thing that they probably did was put Goldberg in his own little enclosed uh, dressing room with padded walls and said, go nuts. Regardless. Yeah, that's how they do. <laughs> smashing his, ah, just smashing his yeah. head everywhere. Nah. Yeah, exactly. He can't stop it. It's just part of the routine. But if you put padded walls in, then you're protecting him. You're protecting yeah. your investment, Andrew. That's what you do. <laughs> The Young uh, Belair defeated Dewdrop, Nikki <laughs> A.S.H., Alexa Bliss, Liv Morgan, and Rhea Ripley in the Elimination Chamber. Again, a lot of the wrongs were made right here. A lot of people were concerned that Bianca's going to get pushed to the side, and she obviously hasn't. She's still going to face Becky Lynch at WrestleMania in a big-time rematch. Um, I know that Becky really wants to make Bianca look good. That's what everybody's telling me. I think that's going to be a fantastic match. And I think Bianca deserves to be in that spot. She is. I got to tell you, I watched all of Raw this week live, which I hadn't done in a very long time. She is so impressive, Bianca. Yeah. She is so she really impressive. Is. I think the, the uh, her match with, um, with Dewdrop, I didn't think it would be, you know, I thought it was really good. It was fine. It was, it was what it was supposed to be meant to be. And I think Dewdrop looked good. And I think Bianca looked good. Very impressed by Bianca. Again, I, I say this all the time, and I and I should stop being impressed because she's so good. But every match, I'm very impressed by her. Yeah, she's got not only that charisma, not only the it factor, but on top of that, she's strong as hell. And for them to go and give her the win in the chamber, her first chamber appearance, great. She wins the Rumble last year. She's on a roll. Anyone who thinks that Bianca Belair is being, quote, shoved down your throat hasn't been paying attention. No. They've been Do slowly people think building that? her up in the back. There people are people think- who are... Yeah, there are people, at least on the on the the internet, where yeah. you know everyone likes to talk. But mm. Bianca versus Becky is the match. And hearing what came out last week from Louis Dangor about maybe it being a four horsewoman triple threat or uh, four fatal four way at Mania, I'm glad that that's not happening. There's I actually another spoke to Louis that, this about week. this uh, when he when he posted it. I, I we were DMing and I and he was you know we were like just cross referencing some of the stuff that we had heard. I had heard this. I mean, I've heard this every year, right? You, you've heard this a while, but I did hear that this was a little bit more of a discussion. Not that they would, I, I don't know if they would do it, obviously, because the writers pitch a ton of stuff. Um, yeah. I, I This year obviously would not have been the year, but it would have been a very, and, and I don't think the Ronda equation is the big one here with this. A lot of people say, well, it's because Ronda's involved. No, I think it's the, I think it's more to do with the fact that uh, Bailey is still you know, yes, not re- she, she, her, she wasn't, she had setbacks and well, I don't know if that played a major part in this or, but I think it was a combination of things. I, I listen, they have all the time in the world to do this still. They have in the next I couple think, of years to get through this. I think a lot of people don't necessarily realize that when we were getting into the Royal Rumble and people were talking about Bailey coming back, Bailey was posting stories of herself, just learning how to jump again. Yeah. She's got some time until she's free. And I think if she does come back, it'll be the night after Mania with Bianca having the title. And she says, you didn't beat me. In fact, we were supposed to have a match and I got injured. And now I want that match. And that's how you open up Bianca's next title reign. And I'm cool with that. I think that's a great opponent for her. You know, another decorated champion. She's, you know, it's that one generation removed, right? Exactly. You know, so I, wow, wild to think that that, we we are now past that women's revolution generation of of talent on this roster. Now we have a whole new. Uh, I mean, you look at this card, and it's a whole very different group of you know great competitors. It really is. It's it's amazing, especially with that elimination chamber match. It was all different women, and yeah, it was a good match. It was a really fun match. Ronda Rousey and Naomi defeated Sonya Deville and Charlotte. It was fun. It was whatever. Ronda came out in her gi. I almost went and put mine on. Rich oh, yeah? was trying to get What's... me to put my gi on. With with your what what with your your blue belt black belt I don't know I'm, the belts I'm a, I'm a third degree black belt in Taekwondo. Oh, okay, well then I know not to piss you off again unless I have I photos. can't do shit. Let me tell you something. It's all nonsense. <laughs> it's <laughs> all nonsense. Go on a rant about you know karate? Joe Rogan. Joe Rogan discovered that Taekwondo was bullshit. Okay, a, a late stage in life, he talks about it. He's like, yeah, I just realized that it just wasn't like it was fine, but it's not like real combat sport, right? Uh, I I came to that realization. Uh, very early on. <laughs> I hear Tai Chi is where it's at. Tai Chi you really is where it's at. It. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Drew McIntyre defeated Riddick Moss in a false count anywhere match. Riddick fell right on his head. Uh, nasty, nasty spot. He's okay. 
But yep, a lot of God people, you know, backstage reports were that people were very impressed by Riddick. I, actually, Riddick is impressive. He's he's uh, Madcap Moss. I'm so sorry, Madcap Moss. He's not Riddick anymore. Uh, actually, in in my parts, Andrew, we call him future Intercontinental Champion Madcap Moss. Okay, future future IC Champion Madcap Moss. He's fine. I like yep. him. He's another he's another guy that that they got to get those stupid suspenders off him, but. He looked good. <laughs> Obviously, this is leading now into a Drew McIntyre and Baron Corbin match. And, and to be honest, this is in my I shouldn't say my opinion. In my in my knowings, this was this feud was supposed to end when like three weeks ago. Uh, no, more than a month ago. January was really? supposed to end. And because of Drew's injury, they just couldn't position the uh the mania thing. So now we have a Baron Corbin and possibly Drew McIntyre mania match. Yeah. Don't really care for yeah. it. It'll it'll be it'll be like WrestleMania 35, where yeah. it'll be Drew having a quick match. It'll be a squash towards the end of the night, and people will just say, "All right, well, we did that." And I want better for Drew, but if this is the way we're going to do it, then that's the way we're going to do it for now. Yeah. Becky Lynch defeated Lita to retain the Raw Women's Championship. Uh, weird ending. Uh, it was it was a weird match. You know, it was kind of slower. Uh, Lita looked way better. You know, than than previous uh, times she's been in the ring. Uh, the ending came out, and I understand why they did it the way they did, but it kind of came out of nowhere. So uh, I don't know if this is Lita's last match. If it is, you know, she faced Becky Lynch in a major stadium. Good way to go out. Uh, and now Becky's ready for Bianca. Brock Lesnar defeated Bobby Lashley, Austin Theory, Matt Riddle, AJ Styles, and Seth Rollins in an Illumination Chamber match to win the WWE Championship. Bobby Lashley has lost the title once again without actually losing the title. He's got claims. Yeah. When he comes back, he's got claims to go after He has again. tons. He has tons. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I don't think this is wrong to do. I think Brock having the title, if you are doing, and which you are doing, right? Uh, you're doing Roman Reigns and Brock Lesnar. You want this to be bigger than previous matches, which we're going to get to this, obviously. But... Yeah. Uh, does this change the interest level in the match? For me, a little bit. For a little bit. It sweetens it a little bit. But, you know, like, I, I get why they're doing this. I get what their thinking is. You know, but who do you... Who, who who wins this? Does Brock walk around with two titles? Does Roman now have claim to both brands? And, oh. and you know, how long do you keep that up? Because then that means that he has to lose at some point now. You want to know how this ends? Tell me. At WrestleMania, Roman Reigns wins, has both titles in his hands with the bloodline surrounding him. He's excited. And then he throws down that WWE championship, not the universal one, the WWE championship. And then they're forced to do a multi-man match at oh, WrestleMania Backlash. No. See, I would hate and you that. Know who, and you know who walks out with Brock, the WWE Brock championship? Lesnar? No. Cody. Oh, my. I love your and, fantasy booking. I don't, I don't care for that ending, though. I don't, I don't want oh, to see the title thrown on the floor. So the reason I see it like that is because of what happened at the Rumble, where you had Roman Reigns come in and knock Bobby Lashley out with the title, and then what did he do? He immediately threw it on the ground like he didn't care about it. Yeah, interesting. That's where I'm getting that. You can see that in his eyes. He was like, no, nah, the blue title is the one I care about. So I, I could see that going on at WrestleMania. Yeah, very. Uh, you know what? Possibly. Raw highlights 1.825 million. Uh, viewership is hanging on there. Uh, they had a very strong uh, 18 to 49, a 0.51, 662,000 views. I believe this is the most watched by the key demo since early October. Obviously, WrestleMania season. Numbers are going up. Brock Lesnar was interrupted by Paul Heyman. This was fun, okay? And, and then we're going to go into a lot of the news. I'm just going to skim down this really quickly because uh, there's a bunch of WrestleMania stuff to talk about. But this was really cool to see. Heyman comes out, cuts a promo, right? And what did they do? They plug two shows. They plug SmackDown. Great. And they plug the MSG show coming up, I believe, March 4th. When is that MSG I show? I think it's the 5th, which is the day after that uh, SmackDown in Miami. Very interesting, right? Uh, I, I think yeah. I'm going to go to that Smack, uh, to that uh, house show, by the way, on the 5th. I you think should. I'm going to be there. Hey, those are fun. It's, those are fun at the dude, garden. It, it's like 10 minutes away. Uh, how do <laughs> I not? Why not? Uh, so. Very interesting to, for them to promote a house show, and they announced that Bobby Lashley will be the opponent unless he can't compete. 
So if he can't compete, I'm curious who it is. Very, very, very curious by this. Maybe it's Cody. Oh, God, no. What if he's a Paul Heyman guy? What if they bring him in as a Paul Heyman dude? Okay, so you know how this give cre- okay here. Let's give credence to the argument. Yeah, if what I say comes true and Cody debuts in Miami the night before, then he confronts Roman Reigns and Paul Heyman says, "You want a shot at the title? You got a shot at the title. It's going to be the next night, Madison Square Garden. You're going to take on Brock Lesnar." Cool. But then you crush Cody, and it looks bad. Then you crush Cody. Yeah, he can't do that on the first night in. Well, unless it's not you know, is. unless it's like a you know, like a he goes and faces him for like two seconds, and then everybody runs in and beats him up. You know. Yeah, you could do that, but then I don't know. I feel like it'll just be the Usos. It'll you know be like a love? two-on-one handicap match. You know what I would love? Ah, oh, dude, you you know what? I'm having fun with this fantasy booking, right? Let's do it. It's Austin Theory and Cody at WrestleMania. Vince <laughs> got a new son. He has a new boy now. Yes. <laughs> he got rid of Shane, right? Shane's the old boy. The new boy, Austin Theory, he's not cutting the mustard. He has a new boy, and he, he you know, Hunter's not around. It's Cody. And he's like, my son, my son's here. Cody, my boy, you're back. You're back to daddy. You know, he cuts this crazy promo and they have this like father and son relationship. I, uh, I could be a plumber too. <laughs> and Fitz is like with a plunger. He doesn't know how to use a plunger. He's putting it the opposite end. Did you get those polka dots I sent in the mail for you? <laughs> Did you put them on your tights? Yep. Yeah, I you know I'm having fun with that. That's not happening. <laughs> I just like I like to fantasy book with Joel. That's what we do now. That's our thing. It's you know what? That should be not. our gimmick. That's our gimmick. Now we just fantasy book terrible, terrible finishes. The uh, problem Ms. is I do that. Hold on, I do that on another <laughs> show, and most of the time it comes true, and people That's... friggin' hate me for it. <laughs> terrible. Uh, Miz introduces tag partner that will be facing Mysterio WrestleMania. Plenty of Cody hints here, but it's Logan Paul. Uh, Tomasa Ciampa and Finn Balor defeated Dolph Ziggler and Bobby Roode. Tomasa Ciampa and Finn Balor look fantastic together. Uh, Ciampa looked great. He he yes. unaged by like 15, 20 years by, by, you know, shellacking his beard. Edge laid down an open challenge for WrestleMania, teasing a potential opponent. This was cool. A lot of uh, speculation that it's AJ Styles, which I am not against seeing that match. I, I very oh. much would like to see that match. I, AJ just signed a new contract, which is in our new segment. Uh, I think, you know, he's happy there, man. And, dude, the guy worked very hard to get to where he is. He's making the most money he's ever made. I believe his wife's a teacher. Yeah. As far as I think, I think. Uh, he, you know, he wants to live his life and have fun. And he's living his life and having fun. And I think he said something like he's going to work backstage, hopefully, after he retires. So, uh, he's a one in a million guy, and I'm and I'm so glad that they recognize that about AJ because he's one of the, yeah, I mean from the 2000s, one of the best talents that came out of that era, really, and uh, unrecognized for a very long period of time that, to the caliber that he could perform uh, for many, and, and I think now we it's solidified. He he has his career solidified as one of the top guys in the business of all time, really, uh, for yeah. that era. We don't say Hall of Fame career as much without it meaning a lot. And in this case, it really means a lot because yeah. AJ Styles will be that first ballot Hall of Famer, quote unquote, that people like to talk about and, and deservedly so. Never held the Ring of Honor World Championship, huh? Time to go back. I hear that Super Card of Honor, there'll be a nice championship <laughs> opportunity for him there. Yeah. Like he can walk in, walk out because, hey, it's just independent contractors for ROH moving forward. Why not? Yeah. But well, isn't that how it works in WWE independent contractors, right? They could go work wherever they want. That's that's what an Perfect. independent contractor is, right? That's how AJ it works. Styles, AJ Styles reclaiming the forbidden door, whatever the hell that is. Seth Rollins and Kevin Owens defeated Randy Orton and Riddle. KO and Seth added to tag title match in two weeks. KO took more shots at Texas throughout the night. Oh, and Veer's coming. All right. WrestleMania update. Here we go. WWE announced announces two presenting sponsors for WrestleMania 38, Snickers and 2K22. Both will exclusively sponsor main event on both nights. Undertaker will headline the Hall of Fame on April 1st after SmackDown. NXT TakeOver stand and deliver official... Is it a TakeOver? No, they're just calling it... They got rid of the TakeOver yeah. moniker. I think NXT stand, stand deliver. and deliver officially announced for Saturday, April 2nd. will air at noon... Thank God. You know, that freaking, that weekend, I don't, I was going to go to Dallas, okay? 
I was going to go to da- I, I was contemplating, but there's so much content and I can't do. I can't go to Dallas. Uh, updated Mania card. Obviously, now we have Brock Lesnar and Roman Reigns. Winner take all match for both titles. SmackDown Women's Championship, Charlotte and Ronda. Raw Women's Championship, Becky and Bianca. And everything else is happening. All right, let's go to news. Uh, we did the Cody stuff, obviously. WWE has re-signed Jake, Drake Maverick to as a producer. They very much like this dude, man. Yeah, he's a great mind for mm-hmm. wrestling. He clearly knows what he's doing. The only problem is that he's been released a couple of times. I wouldn't yeah. be surprised if his releases were um, political in nature, not speaking on him specifically being the politician, but others in the back causing a little bit of a play. Uh, we, we don't need to get into it, but for the fact that he's coming back and he's working as a producer this entire time, all I wish they had done is just, instead of releasing him over and over again, just talk his contract out with him. Yeah. I'm sure he would have been willing to do it, willing to talk about it. And if I see another video of him tossing that WWE t-shirt in the trash, I'm going to beg them to at least send him a new one because he's got to get the stank out of it. I don't yeah, want him to get time. fired again, though. I'll tell you that much. No, he's I don't want him to get fired again. AJ Styles signed, obviously, a uh, big deal. Uh, not big deal, like, yeah, big deal. Like, it's a big deal. Uh, Machine yeah. Gun Kelly producing WWE 2K22 soundtrack will be a playable character. I know everybody's clamoring at this, right? They want to play as Machine Gun Kelly, right? That's what everybody wants to do? I mean, I want to play as Kevin Owens so that I can powerbomb Machine Gun Kelly off the Raw stage. That's yeah, all I want. You could do that, yeah. yeah. He's curating the, uh, the list also. Uh, Shane Strickland. Okay, this is interesting. Has been signed to AEW. Um, I have a feeling I know when he's showing up. I think he has some oh. commitments up until the like the first uh the first week in March. So around then, I would imagine. Like so like probably a week or two. Uh he'll be there. Great addition to the roster, fantastic talent. Uh I hope to see what he could do. And listen, this was a weird way that this was announced, right? Jeff Hardy has signed with AEW. Um, what a weird announcement, right? Yes. To take a chance, a YouTube channel with 330 subscribers <laughs> in the like dingy background. I don't, I don't know if people have seen this. It's like the dingy underbelly of a concert hall and there's no microphones. It's just a guy with a camera just pointing and shooting and you really got to look for the audio. But yeah, he, Jeff Hardy basically says that he's signing with AEW and I think made an illusion. I didn't see the full interview through but he may have made an allusion to going back to wwe after he's done with aew so i don't know if that's true or if that's in the plans regardless sure he's beloved i mean you know he he very much so in that company uh come in do do those tag matches man and and then leave i mean you could do that obviously he's not gonna have this long-term time in AEW, i can't see him like wrestling every week for the next three years right I, neither, neither no, should I just, he i don't think he I should just, i think he's in a position in, in in his career where he could come and go and do whatever the hell he wants at this point yeah he's just gonna come in look at the uh the set and be like what's the tallest thing i can jump off of here yeah <laughs> and then that's gonna be it that, that's gonna be every single appearance for jeff hardy love well, the him, man he's gonna look for ways we'll, we'll get that hardy's match again hardy's and the uh, bucks right we'll get that yeah. hardy's yeah. and ftr Hardy's yeah. and Lucha Bros. Hardy's and Private Party is where you Hardy's get and off. Private Party. Uh, maybe a couple singles matches for for uh, Jeff Hardy. Yep. What if you do a CM Punk program? You know. Oh, that's a good callback. Could have a lot of fun with that. Him and MJF would be cool. You know, you could have a couple of those big time matches and then move on and do whatever. Obviously, he's a WWE Hall of Fame level guy. They had uh, one. They wanted him for the Hall of Fame. They want him back, and and you know. Is now the time to do it? Probably not. I think they should go in together first, Matt and Jeff. Could you imagine if he says yes, shows up at the Hall of Fame, and then the next night or whenever, yep, like a few nights later on yeah. Dynamite shows up, and he's just like, you could. Hall of Fame. He could. He could. Uh, AEW Revolution will be shown in select theaters again. So this is interesting. Tony Khan's big announcement. He said that there's an there are NDAs involved with this announcement. Um. I believe this is a this is my own opinion. I think this is going to be more like a streaming thing. Yeah. Uh, but you know, this is what I've said. AEW would really benefit if they had access to a library, right? Because they they do need to build a streaming platform. And 
you know, unfortunately for them, yeah, there's tons of content with AEW, AEW Dark and uh, Elevation and Dynamite for the last couple of years, but it's only a couple of years worth of content. You know, when you're launching a network of sorts, you kind of need more, more content. Uh, how wonderful would it be if they, they do some sort of deal with Ring of Honor where they're able to put the Ring of Honor content on there or, or something else? You know, I, I think that would be a big part of their streaming platform if they're able to do it. But I personally think this is maybe some sort of announcement that they have a streaming provider. What do you think? So if you are Tony Khan and you are with AEW, you're looking for the best platform that has the most eyes on it and also has a little bit of wrestling crossover. For me, I would probably want to put it on a place where, say, John Cena has a well-produced show. Yeah. Or, you know, I'm talking Peacemaker. Right? You, want to, you want to go somewhere where you'll get eyes on your product, but you'll get eyes on the product because someone's watching something else that they're really into. And then AEW becomes like this. Oh, I didn't realize wrestling was here. I think that's where you go with it. You can you can put it on Honor Club. You can put it on, you know, Peacock, whatever it would be. Obviously not Peacock, but you put it on one of those streaming services. But it's got to have, uh, it's got to have a reason for you to sign up for it because yeah. AEW becomes secondary in nature. Uh, well, I the mean, other think thing about is, it though. The Bleacher Report stuff, it, it's so outdated. It's such like a yes. like a funky uh, setup. It doesn't make sense. But HBO Max makes the most sense. It's a it's a it's a Warner Media property. Yes, it needs to be HBO Max. And also, I'm begging you, please, Tony, stop with the announcements of the announcements of the announcements, please, for the love of God. Yeah. Starting to really just well, I'm it, it has my mind. to deliver these announcements. You know, they they have to like this can't be a very simple announcement, right? It, it right. needs to deliver. And when you keep saying I have a massive announcement. People are going to take it the wrong way and they're going to speculate and the speculations are always going to be more than what uh, you think. Yeah. You People know? assume it's a debut. They assume it's something. But the other thing is he continues to do this big announcement after a dynamite ratings drop one week. And that that is a problem for me. You got to don't don't just tell me I'm going to have like, oh, the next big star. You can make it a surprise. You don't need to, to push it. You have a good show. Last night's show was great. We'll talk about it. Was it very sure. good show. And they pulled up, but they didn't need necessarily a big debut surprise to make it great. Yeah, I, I agree with you. I, I think that, I don't know, we'll see what happens, man. I I think I think doing a deal with HBO and having them as your provider and airing it live on HBO Max would bring a different level of um, facade to your company. Mm. Not not in a bad way. I'm not using facade as like a, like a, it's... You know, it's all smoke and mirrors here, but it would add another, you know, it's like going from vinyl, vinyl siding to stucco, you know, just a little bit more makeup on your brand. And I think that's a major positive here. And you're obviously HBO Max has been blowing up. They like I'm considering killing my Netflix, Netflix subscription because I barely watch anything on Netflix anymore, except for that did. Tinder, the Tinder swindler. Uh, that was fantastic. Yeah. Yes, it was. Um, <laughs> yeah, very uh, fast. There is a meme going around. Oh, no. <laughs> uh, all over the internet, and it's a sapphire meme, and it was him calling uh, one of the girls and saying he needs like a fifteen thousand dollar wire transfer because he spent too much money at Sapphire, and that his enemies <laughs> enemies spent the money at Sapphire and not him. That he needs to pay the uh, bill. I thought it was fantastic to see that. Uh, as wonderful. a as a creative marketing guy, uh, I couldn't come up with that. I kudos to whoever did. So I. I don't know. Like I, I, I don't need Netflix anymore. But HBO Max has been killing it, and they have tremendous content on there. Uh, great, great opportunity for them. Here's another big story: AEW Double or Nothing announced that they will be, they're gonna have multiple nights in Vegas. Mm -hmm. Double or Nothing will be taking place at T-Mobile Arena, as opposed to MGM. I'm, Perfect. You, you think this is a good thing? I love this. Why is that? So it's time to start moving into larger arenas. Whether or not you sell them out doesn't matter. The fact that your scalper situation gets a little easier to handle when you have a 20,000 seat arena, that works for me. It also shows that they're ready to take that next step. They can fill a 10,000 seat arena, that's fine. But when you go and Double or Nothing is one of your biggest pay-per-views of the year, you can fill that T-Mobile arena, especially when it's so accessible on the strip. It's right at the top of the strip, I think. 
It's top of the yeah. bottom. It's one extreme. And like I stayed at the Park MGM after SummerSlam and I literally stared at that venue and I was like, this is perfect. It's right outside my window. So if you're going to Double or Nothing, what hotel should you stay at? MGM? Uh, you could stay at MGM. I'd stay at the Park MGM, not the MGM Grand, because one is newer than the other. Uh, the you Park can MGM is Mandalay newer? Bay. Yeah, yeah. You, and you can stay at Mandalay Bay, too, because they're going to be doing di uh, Dynamite and Rampage at the Michelob Ultra Arena. So you can stay there and get across the street. It's so easy on the Strip. That's the other thing. So you and I talked about me going to Revolution. I'm not going anymore for two reasons. One, my, my wife and I are expecting, and, and it's pretty close to the date, so we're not doing that. And the other thing is that they're not having it uh, in Orlando proper. They're having yeah. it at the University of Central Florida, and that's like 20 miles down the road, and the hotels are just not there. So for me to, to, to have to get a hotel, fly down, I'm Canadian, so I got to do all the COVID stuff too. For me to do all the stuff, it ends up being $1,000 Canadian just to go to the vet, like just to go to the city and hotel. Yeah, yeah. So I just said, forget it. It's not worth it. The tickets are 29 bucks, sure. But the hassle involved and knowing that I work with media, having to wait until 2 a.m. when TK finally lets everyone out of the scrum yeah. and there's nothing open and there are no Ubers, there's no public transit. It's like, <laughs> good God. I have to tell you, one of the worst experiences was that show in Chicago leaving that building. Yeah, the story that was is nuts. That was it's, uh, uh, impossible. So I can't I can only imagine what Orlando is going to be like. Uh, I, I think this is cool though. Vegas, like I love Vegas. So I'll be at that show. Obviously Sunday, May 29th. I think we're going to do a whole gathering and a, and a meet up there. And we'll try to figure it out, but very excited for this. Uh, Cody. <laughs> MG Geek. <laughs> M yes. Another, another, another big F. Cody and Carmella apparently are starting a new reality show. I, I don't oh, know if you awesome. know this. I don't know if you know this. This is breaking news to me. Uh, let's get MG Geek on the line here so I could yell at him. Matt, I think this is Cody perfect. and Carmella, huh? Mm. <laughs> all right, now he's muted. All right, that's all I needed from him. Uh, <laughs> Wonderful. <laughs> uh, let's see. Uh, Corey Graves and Carmella have a new reality show. It'll air on WWE YouTube. It has 86 million subscribers, which is more than any of the networks. So uh, we'll see how this does. Japan news, Kyrie Sane has returned to stardom, going by Kyrie. A New Japan New Year's Golden Series. Uh, Sedan, I, 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 I gotta skip this. I, Sonata. Up, uh, Sonata, no, 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 I, I, we don't, I don't think I have enough time. <laughs> but I'll, you know what, I'll do it fast. Sonata defeated uh, Tanashi? Tan wow, that is not right. Ah. Uh... Tanahashi to win the IWGP. Hiroshi Tanahashi to win the IWGP. You know, this is like the best bit ever, right? Uh, he does the notes in like a manic way. He's like, bah, 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 bah. and he gets all the names wrong, which is fantastic. Okada a retained a tons of sociology involved in these matches and, and in writing the notes. Okada retained the IWGP World Heavyweight Championship over Naito. Uh, very good match. Yeah. And uh, Kenga Pro Wrestling Championship Dog Cage match. Toro Yano defeated Minoru Suzuki. It was insanely fun. All right, Dynamite last night. Let's go into this. The Battle Royal. Kyle O'Reilly was a last man eliminated. He eliminated a uh, last man standing. He eliminated Matt Jackson to earn the spot for the AW Tag Team Championship match at Revolution. I'm into this match, man. I, I hope that they win it. I'd love to see them with the titles. I think this is going to be a retention of titles for Jurassic Express. I think it's too early to let him drop it. I agree with you. There is money absolutely in the Red Dragon Young Bucks feud, but I'd rather see that feud start without the titles and then build into it later on. Yeah, I think there's still more story stuff. to tell with Jurassic Express. So this was um, this led to a problem amongst everybody in the team where uh, Adam Cole came out. Adam Cole came out trying to settle things. Uh, the Bucks in them, everybody got in each other's face. Here comes Adam Page. He clears the ring. Cole tried... Uh, to, to kind of, uh, you know, get involved here. Paige does story time with Adam Cole, but he does his own twist on this. Very good opener. It was a lot of fun. A lot happened here, right? Yep. And it was a very promo-heavy dynamite, and not in a bad way. Uh, it was a little bit less action and more storytelling to build up the pay-per-view, and I think they did a very good job here. MJF promo. 
Very good promo. Very strong God, promo. Yes. Essentially, he came out talking about how he was bullied due to his learning disabilities. Uh, and he was bullied because he was Jewish. I don't know how much of that. I mean, I don't know if this is all true or not. He went to plain. He lived in Plainview. It is very, true, by the way. It is true. Yes, I was and shocked he's, by he's that. that well before. Okay, he's, I'm he's very surprised that by that. And that, that, like, in a disappointing way, and like in a very sad way. Plainview is very Jewish, Plainview, Long Island. And yeah. I was shocked when somebody, you know, I had heard some of this prior. Like, I don't know if it was like a, you know, a work story or what, but a terrible story that he, that he told about just being bullied and, you know, just looking up to CM Punk and just very passionate, emotional. Uh, that that throwing the roll of quarters, uh, what a what a heinous kids could be so freaking mean, you know. Yeah. Adults could be mean too, but kids, I I mean, could be so cruel. Uh, I was very surprised by that. That that kind of stuff goes on in Plainview, Long Island. It's not just Plainview. I mean, I know it's not just world. Plainview, but no, I, I know. I, me. Yeah, like I, I listen. I'm I'm a Jewish kid. Like I I grew up in in Ottawa, Canada, and luckily I don't think I ever grew up with any, you know, acts of anti-Semitism. I also happen to not look like a stereotypical Jew for better or worse. You know, it's just the story that MJF told was, was a hundred percent. Like it, it's maybe you embellish it a little bit just to get your point across, but the stories themselves are true and it's, it's nuts. No one should ever have to deal with that type no, of bullying. Terrible, terrible, uh, unbelievable stuff. Uh, especially, you know, New York, proper New York area. You, you kind of like in your mind, you're like, yeah, you don't really expect, expect it. But it happens, man. It happens, it happens a lot. Everyone's everyone's crossed over there, too. Yo, yeah. It's not just Jews are in a bubble. It's living with everyone else. Let's see. Where were we? Uh, OK, so MJF, uh, one thing that cheered him up was meeting CM Punk to the point he wanted to be like Punk. But in January 2014, when MJF needed Punk the most, you left great twist to the story so punk comes out and he's like is this true and he goes yeah and he was so conflicted didn't know what to do like you could see like the 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 color in punk's face kind of get washed off a and it was very well done great twist yeah death triangle to watch it. uh penta dark and pack defeated the kings of black of the black th throne malachi black and brody king uh, Penta got the pen here, and it led to the debut of Buddy Matthews. Woo! I, is he going to get all like mysterious and dark? Also, is he going to like have like face paint? I think he's going to come out because he's the only one who's not tattooed. He's going to come out next week with like a single tattoo and be like, "Look, everyone, I'm part of I'm this. Part thing. of this." <laughs> <laughs> he it's... got, he got it. He's in now. He's initiated. Uh, dude, he looks huge. Yes, yeah, swole as hell. Good stuff. Oh man, man. He, yeah, he looks great. Yeah, doesn't you know didn't, what? didn't lose a step. How many years ago were people saying like, man, him and him and Omega would have a really good match, right? Now we can see it. It'll happen yep, now. Now's your chance. Yep. Jericho Eddie Kingston promo. Uh, this was interesting. A lot of like work shoot stuff. A lot of inside lingo being used. Uh, Kingston was annoyed that the security was in the ring. And he came out and said, I'm not a sports entertainer. Jericho said, this this sports entertain this is sports entertainment will actually will be entertaining. A shot at WWE. They agreed to a match of revolution. They went back and forth. He wants a class uh he wants a classic Jericho, the Jericho that uh Triple H hated. Very he, interesting. he said Levesque. Levesque. He went Levesque a lot of insider hated. on this. Yeah. Yeah, a lot of inside talk here. You know what? They did a good build, but Jericho comes off as the heel here, right? Yeah, that's. I think that's the point. You you're turning Jericho again, the the quote unquote influencer Chris Jericho as they're now billing him, and they're they're just gonna have this match. And you know what? It'll be fine for what it is. I need Eddie Kingston to win for God's sake. But uh, if it's if it's a brawl of a match, I'll enjoy it uh, more than anything. There was a thing going around where Jericho was saying, uh, "I don't care I, I, whoever that guy was that you cut a promo on." And got you to AEW. People started assuming that was the Cody promo. What was it? It was uh, at uh, it was an indie event. Yeah, it was no holds barred, and he had just defeated Brett Eisen. In, in and in that like was the promo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Yeah. That was the promo where he challenged Cody, Nick Aldis, he ch- everyone. And that got him the gig at AEW where he could then cut a promo on Cody. But people said, you know, oh, he didn't mention Cody because Jericho is being Jericho. No, he just couldn't remember Brett Eisen's name. That's how I yeah. took it. Yeah, I, I don't anyway. think he knows Brett Eisen's name. Uh, he didn't mention Cody because he didn't want to mention Cody. Right. Either way, yeah. shout out to JR for completely ruining that this match was going to be made official. <laughs> what did he say? As Kingston, was, as Kingston was getting into the ring, he announced the match is happening. And then this whole point of this promo was oh, for them to announce that they're going to do the match. <laughs> oh, Sassafras. <laughs> Good stuff. <laughs> TBS champion Jade Cargill defeated the bunny. Jade looks fantastic. I mean, she's Amazing. unbelievable. Uh, Tay Conti stepped up after the match and challenged Jade. Okay, so that's a match. And the main event... Daniel, Brian Danielson defeated Daniel Garcia. This was a very good match. He countered the dragon screw by kicking Garcia in the head, locked on the triangle for the win, uh, and Moxley came out at the end. Yep, set up that match for Revolution. I'm sure it'll mm-hmm. be the bloody match of the show, and I'm fine with that. Uh, it's a stacked card coming up for Revolution. Yeah, uh, the matches look great. You're going to get uh, Adam Cole versus Hangman Page at Revolution for the title. AW Women's Championship, Thunder Rosa and Britt Baker. I think this Thunder should Thunder Rosa should win this one. Tay Conti, Jay Cargo. Uh, what is that? Do you think they should add a stipulation to uh Rosa and Baker? You know, they do everything backwards. They had the blood and guts match, right? They mm-hmm. had the 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 hardcore match, and now they're going back to a regular match. I don't AW tends to do that a lot. They go backwards. Yes, yeah, true. They start yeah. off with like this crazy gimmick match, and then they they go back to like a regular one. It, it's reverse booking. Uh, and you got a triple threat for the AW World Tag Team Championship. The winner of the Casino Tag Royale versus Red Dragon versus Jungle Boy and Luchasaurus. So who wins that Casino Tag Royale? The Bucks? I guess. There's no other story you can tell unless the Bucks get screwed out of it and you're just building towards Red Dragon and the Bucks again. I guess so. I guess like, you could do that. There's no, uh, there's no other way to do it. And then what? I guess the two cancel each other out, beat each other up so bad that Jungle Boy and Luchasaurus get a win. Yeah. Based on the Revolution ladder match to follow, Keith Lee, Wardlow, Powerhouse Powerhouse Hobbs, Ricky Starks versus Turnbuckle Dan and Turnbuckle Danny. Mm, Big fan. Let me see here. Uh, Oh, winner gets a future shot at the AW uh, TNT champion, uh, Sammy Guevara. I think this is very cool. I like that they're making the you know making this feel important. Uh, the great moment for Keith Lee, Wardlow, and Powerhouse Hobbs. They're going to look fantastic in this. I'm curious who the other two are. Uh, and Ricky, uh, Ricky Starks. Uh, dog Damn collar match. MJF versus CM Punk. MJF. I, I, I well, I'll speculate on a later show, but I think MJF is going to take this. Chris Jericho, Eddie Kingston, Brian Danielson versus John Moxley in a tornado trios match. Andrade and Private Party. Uh, versus Sammy Guevara, Sting, and Darby Allen. Those are the matches. Interesting stuff, man. A lot of good stuff. It's stacked. It's just a stacked card, and I, they might add one more after this. They might add one more, yeah. So uh, busy, busy card. A couple of weeks out. What are we, two weeks out here? Next week's the go-home show? Yep. Yeah, next week. Go- it's next week. Freaking great. Unbelievable. We're in March already. Q&A time, boys and girls. Submit your questions with the hashtag AskMattMen, and we'll do our best to answer them. Uh, who's going to fire up the, the questions on the screen here? Okay, here we go. Here's one. $1.99 from Matthew. Hey. OFC, it's Joel. Hey, Joel. I'm listening later. He's uh, an avid uh, overbooked watcher. So go there you go. YouTube.com slash Overbook. Get him a plugs in. Uh, get them all in, man. Very cool. Thanks, Bukowski. <laughs> oh, hold on. Four ninety nine from Joel Wood. Another Joel. Uh, so the prevailing theory still that Cody is coming to WWE. Uh, now that can't, I cannot see read my screen because my eyes are going. Now that Candace has a baby, do you think Johnny has come back to WWE? So uh, I definitely think Cody's going to WWE. Uh, all um, I mean, people there believe it. So I could only go based on what I'm told. Uh, I don't know if Johnny's going to go back to WWE. I, I don't know where Johnny should go. Where do you think, Joel? You think he'll go back to I, WWE or you think he'll uh, he'll go to AEW? 
it's such a 50 50 with johnny gargano i could see him going back to wwe i can see him doing stuff on the main roster he's part of that crew of people who have always said you know wwe is where i want to be uh but at the same time hey if AEW comes with an offer that uh allows him to be a stay-at-home dad which is something he wants to do to be on the road less then that's something he can take again they right now johnny's focus and candace of course is having that child and yeah that's it who knows where he winds up but i can see him in wwe i could all right what else do we have here all right uh two dollars from amir sorry if i'm saying that wrong what do you think tony's announcement is uh i think it's a streaming service but what what can like the best case be right like what do people what are people speculating it is do you joel you got a better ear on the on the interwebs what do you think is he, happening? Oh, he now owns Ring of Honor. No, is I, that the story? I, that's the story. That's clearly the story. Is that, is that what oh. people think that he's buying Ring of Honor? Is that is that being speculated? People started that when Ring of Honor announced that they were taking a hiatus uh, when all the doom saying was coming, and now that's out the door because the Ring of Honor is doing they're doing shows again. Uh, but meanwhile, I mean, the announcement just seems to be it's a streaming service, or they're talking about all the debuts that are happening. And it, I don't think it's the debuts. I do I think it's think more so. of a streaming service thing. What's the craziest one you've heard? Bray Wyatt. It's always Bray Wyatt. Please it's stop with Bray, Bray Wyatt. Wyatt. I can't believe how many people still think AEW is a project that WWE is funding. Why, why do you think Shane left? Why do he you went think to go Shane back? Left? Yeah, he went back to go deal with the AEW thing. I think that, I think that that's like one of the most wild conspiracies that I've heard. All right, what else? Makes we got? sense. Let's see. All right, elite POV question. Since they're going to be doing T-Mobile Arena, do you think they do the United Center at all out? So I, I don't think they will because they very much love that arena unless they do exactly what they're doing with this where they run all out for a live rampage. Uh, I'm sorry, they run um, uh, Sears Center or Now Arena, right? Now Arena? Now, now Arena. Uh, they run Now Arena for Rampage and Dynamite. And they run the United Center uh, for the pay-per-view. I don't know. I, I, I kind of liked that area in Chicago. It was so suburban and, like, quiet. And they had a great... That, that brunch place was fantastic that we went to. Uh, but then you got to leave the venue. <laughs> and then you got to leave the venue, guys. And I don't think people realize what a disaster it is to leave that freaking venue. I was rescued. We, we had to get two separate people to find us on the side of the road at like 1.30 in the morning to take us back to our hotel because you couldn't cross over, even though it's like two miles away from the hotels, you got to go through a highway and it takes hours to walk that. You can't, you can't do it. So it totally messed up uh, uh, exiting, but I think what I'll do, I'll get one of those shuttle buses, I'll rent one of those and just yes. put everybody in there because I can't, I, I can't imagine the disaster that was. Um. United Center is a lot easier. You're you're in the heart of Chicago. Uh, way more accessibility to everything. Uh, much larger building. I don't know. What do you think? You think you should be in Chicago proper? Or you think uh, being in um, uh, wherever they were? So leave Hoffman Estates. Do, do Dynamite, do Rampage, and now Arena. Sure, that's fine. Because you can get home at a reasonable hour and transit's still running or Uber, whatever. Yeah. Do all out of the United Center. If you're running T-Mobile and T-Mobile has as many seats available as United Center, that's that's the sh- that's immediately the shot. You got to do it. Yeah. Uh, you know, I think in the next few days, you'll start hearing uh, a lot of our scoops or friends coming with uh, with information on that, though. Yeah, I, I. When I asked two and a half weeks ago, because I, I'm planning my life out, you know what I mean? Like, I got to plan like what I'm doing with these trips and like I got a bunch of vacations. I got, you know, like you got to You got to plan things out. Um, I was told that the likelihood of them doing United Center was not that as high as them changing an arena in, in Vegas. Mm. So I don't know, like if, if it's maybe this person's not in the know, maybe it was an assumption. I don't know. But I actually liked Huffman Estates. I liked how quiet it was. Um, the, the vicinity from the hotel to the arena, the way that the arena was situated, it was such like an easy building. Um, but again, United Center is the United Center. It's an awesome place. And now you're in Chicago and I can make it into a nice long weekend, you know, and go to all these places in Chicago. So we'll see. If you want to keep it to a 10,000 seat arena, 
just run it at Wintrust. You're in the city again. You're accessible to major parts of Chicago. There's no reason to do it. I yeah. get that you want to be, you know, you want to show your, uh, you want to show the now arena that you're still partners and good friends, blah, blah, blah. But there comes a time where you grow yeah. out of the arenas you started in. Yeah, absolutely. Great question, though. Next question. Yeah. Supersonic X with Asuka coming back in time for WrestleMania 38 and WWE and WWE want her slide back into a storyline. What storylines will she be? I can't read this. I'm so sorry. What storylines will she be? What storylines will she be when she returns? So sorry. I, my eyes are, are gone. Dude, I'm, I'm resisting reading glasses. Get them. I already wear contacts. Like these, I'm blind. No, no, no. I, I am my my. I wear my glasses, my glass prescription, and my contact. It's like a minus five fifty. I cannot see anything. These are Andy, contacts. We're old. Just deal with it. Just I know, man. It. And old. now, now the reading part. Uh, I don't know where you put Oscar. I think Oscar would have been a great opponent for Becky post Mania. Yeah, um, it would have made you know sense. if they weren't going to go with if they weren't going to go with uh, Bel Air. I thought Asuka was a great... By the way, Asuka has a great story built in. She never, you know, I you never won the title. She was handed the title. Now she wants to redeem herself and win the title. You could do so much with that. Uh, where do you see yeah. her going? I could see her running into the tag team situation. I could... WWE is not great at having a mid-card feud. So they probably need to work something in there for her. She's not going to come back and immediately go for a championship unless she goes to SmackDown and steps up to Ronda Rousey first. And then Ronda and Asuka is a fun match, but we know who wins. Yeah, very interesting. All right, next question. Scared Canopy. Love it. I won't be able to watch live, but curious if you think the ROH Hall of Fame shows have anything to do with the marketing of their tape library. Like, if I was trying to peak the value of that collection, this is exactly how I would attempt to demonstrate its value. Yeah, I mean, listen, I, I don't know if they thought about it in that sense. I think that's like an added perk. Uh, but... You know, I think that they realize that these Hall of Fame moments, it's important. People come out. It's another it's a nice way to, you know, create revenue without actually having talent wrestle. Uh, their lineup is tremendous. CM Punk, Danielson, uh, Briscoes and who else? Samoa Joe. Samoa Joe. Uh, you know, this is uh, this is big. Uh, it's a big moment for them. And, I, you know, it's so sad. Like, I. I I feel like for Ring of Honor, they like the story over the last six years is so bad. Dennis Mooney in the chat room. Is this my Dennis Mooney? <laughs> Doesn't matter. He's right. <laughs> I, I, you know what? If it is my Dennis Mooney, I think, first of all, both. If it's not my Dennis Mooney, it's a very Andrew Andrews Dennis Mooney thing to say. Dennis Mooney was my high school social studies and economics teacher that I still have a very good relationship with. I, I, we, we go out for drinks all the time. Uh, so I hope it is. And I'm not being vain. I just haven't gotten reading glasses. Sure. Is there more than one? See, it is my Dennis Mooney. The greatest oh, person I know. Changed my whole life, this guy. Good stuff. We had, we had a nice work agreement. I got it. I'll tell you off the air. Okay. He would let me get away with murder, essentially. Oh, let's do it. Yeah. <laughs> I, I tormented this man so much. One time I, in protest, I sat on the floor because I didn't like the seat I was assigned to. So, and I told my mother that this, this terrible man made me sit on the floor for all the classes. And my mother called him screaming at him. Oh my! God. Saying, why are you making my son sit on the floor in the class? And she, he had to proceed to be like, your son is deranged that never happened <laughs> that's a period to the life right there i get Mooney, it give me I a call it. man let's go get a drink awesome. i haven't seen him in a long time um good stuff all right next question should aw create a women's tag title instead of a long rumor trio set no not yet i definitely I think, think so they either. need because you got to think about it this way right uh, they're just building that women's roster into being something good uh you don't want to saturate it with subpar tag matches just to put that title on TV. 
Not saying that that'll, that's what's going to happen, but they're still in development of that roster. You know, you can't compare it to WWE and their roster. They've had, you know, a decade of hyper-focusing on female talent while AEW is just getting, you know, their bearings in order with this. So uh, I would I would hold off on that. But the trios title, man, that thing was supposed to debut a while ago and they started using the term trios more and more and more. I anticipated soon. Uh, I I think that this is something we'll see, and I think I don't think it's an oversaturation of title belts in AEW if you do a trios title because you're already having those trios matches anyway. Tons the of those TBS trios, trios titles. Yeah, whatever you want to call the, it. The true whatever. TV trios title. Oh, the true TV trios championship. The HBO Max is. trios title. Oh, there it is. The Love HBO it. Max trios title. There you go. All right, that's yep. what we're getting. Good question, BC Knight. Mr. Big Dude 192, big jacked up Rocky in the photo. Uh, what do you think is more likely, Austin actually wrestling or just a segment of WrestleMania? I, uh, I, 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 okay. Sometimes the fans ruin things, okay? I don't think this is going to be that case. I don't think the fans are overly speculating that Austin is going to wrestle. I think these are actual conversations that they've had. Uh, the, what was said to me was never, you know, they've, they've had discussions all the time, right? Less, way less in recent years. But that 2012 CM Punk match, uh, it was a hard no from Austin. Like, but they were like, they were working on him, you know? Like, they were trying to figure something out. But he was... When he retired, he said it took a while to get it out of his system, and he never wants to get that itch again, which I get. Mm. The words that were used to me was, we have never been this close to getting a match. This is the closest that they've ever been, and they most likely ever will be if, if he doesn't even do it, you know? And then the conversation was, well, the goal would be to have him wrestle more than one match if he can, if this works out. And then that gets my gears going. You know, yeah. like, okay, uh, you know, him and Goldberg, obviously, is something that we never got to see. Uh, and then we were having fun on We're Live Pal with Dave. Dave was on We're Live Pal, and Gary and I were like, well, how about him and him and Reigns if Austin, if uh, Rocky can't do it, right? If Dwayne can't wrestle next year, what if that's the match that you could get to? And my God, if that, if they could get to that, you know what that becomes? It becomes the, we never got to see Austin Hogan, but we got to see Austin Rocky, uh, uh, Rocky, Rocky. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, Hogan Rocky, it becomes one yeah. of those. So yeah. I don't know, yeah. you know, like, again, I'm just having fun speculating this. I'm not reporting this at all whatsoever. These are not things that are, I anticipate happening, but I, I hope that he can do something. I think it would be a fantastic treat and like one final, you know, exit. Okay. You know what? We got it out of our systems. We will never talk about it again. If, if, if it's a one-off, if it's a two-off, even yeah. better. You want to know how you figure out whether or not Austin's going to be actually wrestling at WrestleMania. How? You keep watching that Seth and KO versus RK Bro feud because either that match happens for the tag titles and Austin isn't wrestling, or they're going to split up RK Bro, do a match at WrestleMania, and you've got Seth versus Cody, and you do Austin versus KO. But right now they're hedging. Right now they're waiting. They're sitting they on are. it. They, they are don't sitting know on where it. they're going, and I think... Austin is the key to whether or not they run these matches and they need him to make a decision or they're going to blow up their own WrestleMania card. Listen, they could do a five minute thing with Austin. They don't have to do easily, a lot. Easily. easily. And, and you know, you, you start it off. Austin comes in, he does his thing, the middle fingers, the big entrance glass break. Is he going to wear the tights? Is he going to wear the undies or is he going to wear jeans? I think he's going to wear jeans, right? No, I think he's going to wear the tights. He's posting his uh, his workout and his uh, his nutrition regimen on on socials. Is he? And normally, every other time, someone pointed this out to me, every other time someone brought up Austin returning to the ring, he immediately shoots it down on socials. This is the first time where he hasn't said shit. And instead, he's just posting his nutrition and posting his workouts mm -hmm. and getting real jacked for, for, for something. And it ain't the movies, I'll tell you that much. Uh, something, it's like the, something to look at. Let's see. Okay, so I see his nutrition plan, his meal prep. This is from two days ago. Where's I want to see his body. Where's his body? I want to see Jack mm -hmm. Dawson. Maybe that's the big reveal. Oh, he's just totally jacked and ripped. I freaking yeah, dude. You know, I got to tell you, one of the biggest names ever in the business, and such a short run on top. Yeah, ninety eight to to two thousand three. 
That's it. You're talking a very short period to become one of the biggest names ever in the industry. Uh, on top, on top, you know, uh, very interesting stuff. I, the, 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 the kid that grew up on this, you know, I, 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 you know, you and I, we're, we're about the same age, right? Yep. So Give we grew up in a very fan, uh, fascinating era where we had the eighties boom that introduced us to pro wrestling. We had the, like, to me. Bret Hart was the man. Like, I know in revisionist history, we look back, we're like, well, Sean and Bret were never as big. You know, like, you you have that ar argument all the time. But, like, to us, you know, like, watching it as a kid, you don't think that way. You think, okay, you know, this guy is the guy now, and you see him as big as Hogan. You know, as a kid, as a kid, without analyzing pro wrestling. But, and then you saw the transition into something that was so bonkers. This attitude era that targeted, you know, teenage boys. That MTV generation, the Howard Stern generation of shock culture, uh, you know, one of the biggest names in pro wrestling came out of it. Uh, a fascinating transition we got to see. Very interesting. It's going to be a big deal if he comes back. That's oh, man. You know what? I want to see it. And I don't care. But, you know, you could call me a Mark. You could call me whatever. But I, I very much want to see an Austin match. Yeah. I just want it to be good. That's I all want, I want. It doesn't have to be anything, dude. One, two, three. Punches, yeah. punches, punches. Stomp a mud hole. The biggest high spot he'll do is the Luthez press, and that fucking building will blow up. They'll go nuts. And 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 landing on Kevin Owens is perfect because KO is uh, is a, a large gentleman. Bear. So pillow top, yeah, pillow top. Go for it. You know, like he he's gonna. Uh, is he gonna wear long boys though? What is he gonna wear? That's uh, does he wear the undies? No. Black black trunks, Hogan era with the knee braces, the okay, whole Hogan nine. era Hogan era undies. Pull it all the way up to your midsection, that, right under yeah, the chest. Yeah, yeah. One You're of those. Come out looking like Trevor Murdoch. <laughs> Fantastic. Next question. Oh, who has the next question? Jonathan lost power. Oh, here we go. There it is. Uh, Andrew Matman, Joel Pearl, ask Matman. Uh -huh. Do you think Bianca Belair is the biggest star WWE made in the last five years, male or female? That's a great. I mean, the last five years they've done some great stars, right? I think the the um, the change of Roman Reigns will be the story. I think that's the biggest thing that they did over the last five years. This version of Roman is unbelievable. Um, I I, I you know like I got a I got an admission like Observer Awards, you know, and I I didn't. Kenny is Kenny. I voted for him in the past, uh, obviously, but I voted for Roman. I thought Roman had a better year than anybody else at solidifying him and getting the stink of the previous version of him off of him the last year. I mean, he solidified yeah. himself as that guy. You know, you watch that entrance and you stop. And that's how I that's how I'm judging this. When that music hits, you stop what you're doing and you watch this man come out. And, and listen, WWE does a lot of things wrong. Tons that we that we talk about daily, but Roman is not one of those right now. He's Bobby on, Lashley is another right big now. name. They 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 yeah. reinvented Bobby Lashley. You know that's a big one. But on the women's side, Bianca Belair, absolutely. They've she's the future of that roster for, on the women's side, men's and women's side. You know she's going to be she's totally marketable. She's PR friendly. She knows how to do these interviews. She's fascinating when you listen to her. She's a you know she's jacked up. You know she's so strong there's so many different variables to her where it's not like a one-trick pony you know when you when you sometimes you have a character and that's all they are one-dimensional right and they do it great with bianca it's 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 a multitude of things i'm i'm a big fan of her so uh you know what else i love i love Liv morgan not because she follows me on twitter but I do love Liv morgan i i think th there is a there's a case to be made about rebranding her as what? I I would I I there's there's something that I connect with. It could be the the dirtbag northeastern New Yorker, you know, like you tried that. I know, but I like <laughs> listen, they didn't give it time. I can guess. she start dropping I, the I pizza know. on the floor again and eating it? Because I want that again. I think she <laughs> I commented on that. I, I I um whose show was I on? My God. Um Robbie from Barstool. I I did a thing with him and we were talking about this, and I was like, you know, I, I like I, I don't know if, like, maybe it's a little schoolboy crush. I don't know. She dropped that pizza. I'm like, ah, that's the type of girl I like. 
You know? You just wanted to start a bing bong gimmick. Bing bong. <laughs> anyway. You know what? I, I think that I think she needs to start doing bing bong at the end of promos. She comes out. She's like, Asuka, you know what? You're a great wrestler, but you ain't me. Bing bong. People would absolutely lose it. And Vince would be like, what is this bing bong shit? Ping pong. <laughs> yeah. Is she a ping pong player now? It's going to be ridiculous. Fantastic. All right. Next question. All right. Uh, let's see. What can you say about Jay White betraying and kicking out Tama Tonga out of the Bullet Club at No Surrender? I thought, you know, like, if I'm thinking deep, right? Jay White, very cerebral, right, as a character. He probably saw the writing on the wall for him. Normally, when you leave to go to a new territory, you are killed at a Bullet Club. AJ, Kenny, Finn. Maybe he saw this and was like, uh -uh, I'm going to do it first. Uh, I think this is cool. I'd love to see this kind of spill over into AEW if possible. I think Tama Tonga is great. Uh, what do you make of it? I love it. I, I think this is exactly what you said. It is Jay White being cerebral, knowing the history of Bullet Club and saying, not me. I'm going to, you know, I'm going to take my, uh, you know, I, sorry, I'm going to steal the control my narrative or control my narrative, whatever you want to call it. And he's going to come back and kick Tama Tonga and OG Bullet Club member out yeah. and assert dominance. That's what this is. Do I want to see it go over to AEW? A hundred percent. I want to see the Bullet Club is like the actual forbidden door, which yeah. I again hate using that statement. But if you want to talk who crosses over, it's them. It's it's yeah. Bullet Club members. One more question, and I got to get out of here. Let's do it. No, nah, we'll do all day, twenty four hour stream. Oh man, I got to go to Manhattan. I got to get on that that train to nowhere. All right, Mister Gang Green. It, last question of the day. How much do you think the BTE type show for WWE would be a good way to shine the light on some underutilized talent in an entertain in an entertaining fashion? I know that they've they've thought about stuff like this. They've tried it, but they they're so controlling with scripting things. I don't think it would ever come off as genuine. I think some of those backstage stuff that they were doing with um with William Regal and uh, Daniel Bryan, where like Daniel Bryan would rap, like those kind of stuff, like that was the closest that we ever got to it. Or we're in a JBL. How many years ago was that? JBL and Michael Cole. Oh, the JBL, JBL and Michael Cole, Cole show. show. That, that's what it yeah. was. I thought it was great. You know, they dropped that curtain down a little bit. You got a little peek at the back. I thought it was very well done. And then, you know, it's just WWE. Uh, they, they do these things and then they get bored and they move on. Great question. It's also, everything is so polished there too. I, you can't do a BTE style show. Yeah. It just doesn't, it doesn't work it for does, whatever their work. product is. Yeah. All right, listen, Joel Pearl, everybody. Um, uh, what is this one? Does someone have to ask Andrew what train he's taking since Rich isn't here? Yeah, someone has to ask me. I'm getting on the 1158 to Manhattan. That's what I'm getting on. The Penn Station. Sink your watches. Sink yeah. your watches, friend. So I got, I got 10 minutes to make it to the train station right now. So uh, I got to end it. Joel, thank you so much, as always. Thank you. Where can people find you? I'm at Joel Pearl, J-O-E-L-P-E-A-R-L. -E I am not hard to find. I'm also at YouTube.com slash Fightful Overbooked. We drop content every single day on that channel. Excellent, excellent, excellent. Guys, that's it for this week. We'll be back next week. Thanks to Joel Pearl for subbing in for Rich. Rich is going to be back next week. He's on vacation. He went away somewhere. To he a does far 400 away land. episodes. He does 400 episodes, and then he's and like, he's nah, forget the door. this 401. Forget I'm this, out. I'm out. <laughs> All right, guys, that's it for this week. See you later. Take care.